Hello there. Thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and here we have them. Cream with Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker, and Jack Bruce. Oh my goodness. February 1968 in Santa Barbara, California. Cream. Wow. What just, um, what a band, huh? What a band. And this was only the second show of a massive four-month tour of North America that Cream undertook at this particular point in time, early 1968. Just the second show, with almost four months to follow. Now they had the top five LP Disraeli Gears, which was um, obviously propelling audiences to come to the shows, and their um, not quite going big yet, however, was their biggest hit single and the enduring anthem of their career. I'm uh, speaking, of course, of Sunshine of Your Love. But what's really nice is that Sunshine of Your Love first entered the charts of Billboard magazine in the issue dated February 24th. And the date of this concert? You can see right there at the top, February 24th, <laughs> 1968. Oh my goodness, I just love that chart synchronicity when it can happen. And so, you know, what a, what a day to see cream, right? When Sunshine of Your Love first enters the charts. And I remember it was just played all summer long. It just would never go away. And that's okay because, as I said, such an enduring anthem. But that's really quite a time to see cream, that's for sure. So there you have it at the top, I should say, Jim Salser and Casey, the AM hit radio station of the day, present at the showgrounds. Now that's interesting and a little different because quite often Salser posters would say Earl Warren without showgrounds. In this case it says showgrounds without Earl Warren. I think he must have felt that um, you know the full three-word description for the venue was just too cumbersome and so maybe he traded off a little bit. But as I said, usually it's referred to as Earl Warren. But on this Cream poster it's known as the showgrounds. Then you've got Cream's name quite cryptically um, in those five boxes there and um, I'll have to say that's among the most cryptic and hard to read of a headliner's name. I've seen on a psychedelic concert poster because uh, obviously the first goal of the poster artist and the promoter is to sell tickets and grab attention. This one, you know, you, ha you might have had your attention grabbed and be marveling at the colors and the artwork, but it might have taken you a little while to figure out that, uh, you know, this is, <laughs> this is the bottom line right here, cream, the reason um, the poster exists and to sell tickets and so forth. Then you've got this photograph of the young girl, a young woman I should say, or girl, um, early in the 20th century, typical psychedelic poster art using old images. And uh, on either side of her you've got the opening acts, including Henry Fredericks there. I, I mean, I'm sorry, I mean Taj Mahal, as his stage name was known as. Um, obviously Taj over on that side. And uh, this was the same year as Taj's debut album, I believe on Columbia Records, with Ry Cooter and Jesse Ed Davis playing on the record. I don't know if they were playing with him in concert at this particular time. And on the other side, you've got the James Cotton Blues Band, quite a familiar name from anybody who collects late 60s psychedelic rock concert posters. You might recall that um, Cotton went on to open for much of Janis Joplin's first solo tour in 1969, so a very familiar name, as they did all of their R&B and blues covers so well, for sure. And then you've got the small print at the bottom, and I do mean small, over here on this side, in the blue box there, if I can get in for it. It does give a, um, a credit, Lights by Omega's Eye. And then over on this side, I practically have to point it out, it's so tiny. I mean, that is a tiny credit for the poster artist. It says F. Betancourt, which um, that, of course, is Frank Betancourt, who did quite a, quite a few of Salser's posters. So, how do you tell the difference between the first printing, made before the show to sell tickets, and subsequent after printings, of which there were many, because Salser had a chain of record stores in the area, and he obviously liked to take advantage of the synchronicity and everything, and uh, sell them as, I don't know if they were probably a dollar each, would be a guess, but sell them long after the concert, which both promoted him as a promoter, and uh, the bands probably didn't hate it either because it kept their name in front of people's eyes and everything and the cool artwork. But, you know, collectors like me, we love concert posters, but we want the advertising piece, the one that was actually posted to sell tickets or printed for, with that intention, uh, not so much the sundry, numerous afterprints which went on in Saucer's case for years and years. So how can you tell you have an original cream with this one or not? It's a pretty simple tell. There's no printer's bug down at the bottom or anything, but it's all in the girl and her dress. Now notice, uh, as I show you this, um, this young woman here, how she's got a predominantly light pink dress. Can you see that? Um, you know, with some purple in there for sure too, down at the bottom and everything in the chair may be purple. But notice how it's predominantly pink. And you'll really notice when I immediately pull up 
the afterprints, and they all have her dress looking like this. Wow. Which is by far predominantly white. Basically, it's the, all the light pink has been washed out because I guess they didn't use the original plates for the afterprints. They struck a plate from this poster, and so you just lose all the pink color and everything there. I don't know if I should try to get them side by side. Look at that difference. I mean, that's just quite a difference, and you can you don't need the two posters to see that difference. You can discern that over the phone just by asking somebody, is the girl's dress mostly light pink or is it mostly just this really blast of solid bright white? I mean, there's just no question what that can be. So, so that's how you tell the difference, and for collectors, we like that because we like to be able to tell the difference easily and get the original that was made before the show. Cream, what can I say? Well, I wonder if they were doing 20-minute I'm So Glads yet or whatever. Boy, just killer band, great psychedelic concert poster by Jim Seltzer from 1968, beginning of a long tour that took a third of a year. But, wish I was there, <laughs> you probably do too, or maybe you were. Thanks a lot for stopping by, it's been fun showing you this, and we'll see you next time for something else. Okay, bye-bye.